Right guys, we're back, and I've just been having a look around some of the blue stars up here at Thradash Space, the uh, Slylandro telling us about a rainbow world that might be around here. So, I've got a couple more stars to go through. Um, it's taken me like 20 in-game days to have a look. Um, so far, no luck. Uh, it doesn't look like there's anything there either. I think there's like two more to check. Uh, so there's this one down here, which is, what is this one called? This one is Beta Pegasi. Oh, there's a oh, there's something very close in there. I think I saw. Oh, there we go. I saw it flash. It's in there. Look. I think that's Rainbow World. It looks really, really colourful. So that'd be the place to go. It's very hot as well, but that doesn't matter because we've now got the protection on our ship, so we can just go down there and grab all of the radioactives. It seems is pretty much what's down there. Very, very furry, yeah. But there's a few radioactives, so you might as well collect them. Why not? quite a cool surface. Now of course another great thing about this is that the Malnorme will of course pay a lot of money for this information and therefore it means that um, you know finding these rainbow worlds can really give you a big boost if you're struggling finding biodata. Um, so I'm not sure about the exact values that you get but I'm sure we'll find out soon. Um, so there we go we found, a, we found a rainbow world which is really awesome. So let's go out and back into the amazing galaxy or quadrant or sector of the galaxy and find some more rainbow worlds I guess. I think we should be on the hunt for rainbow worlds. Um, so I know there's 10, that's the only thing I know. So I'm going to call the uh, Melnorme and see if we can trade with them. Okay here they come and we're going to trade with them. Here we go. Back, Captain. You are our favorite customer. Now, what can we do for you today? So of course we've now got some stuff to sell, the Rainbow World data. So here we go, I wish to sell you Rainbow World locations. Your ship's log indicates that you discovered the whereabouts of one of the Rainbow Worlds, which so fascinates us. In exchange, we will give you 500 credits. What would you like to sell, Captain? So look at that, 500 credits, that's pretty good. And a ton of biological data as well, awesome. Units of biological data we downloaded from your ship earn you 1,068 credits. Very nice, so we can make some purchases now to get some more information from this guy. would you like to buy today? First of all, let's stock up on fuel. How much fuel? Do you wish to purchase? I would like to have my fuel tanks filled, please. There we go, nice 60 fuel just added to the ship there. Now I want to buy information from you, man. I want to buy some data about um, historical information, because we missed that last time. So let's get some of that. The Urquan named Kazetza was a green. A researcher specializing in repairing the mental damage inflicted by long-term exposure to the Dimyare's psychic compulsion. By this point in history, the Dimyare had grown lax in their dominance, and on occasion accidentally permitted their slaves moments of self-direction. Was able to use those few scattered minutes to compose a theory. From its observations, Kazetza realized that when a slave died, Dinare disconnected from the slave's mind, lest it too be dragged down to death. First, the Irkwan scientist uncovered the fact that when a slave underwent great pain, the Dinyare temporarily disconnected. But that the degree of pain had to be extreme, merely lethal. Kazerza chose its moment carefully. It waited until it was near an open transmission unit. Then, in a short moment of mental freedom, the Urquan injected itself with a dose of acidic poison, sending incredible waves of pain through its long body. In the few moments before its death, 
Ambassador Zaha was able to wrest control of the transmitter to send word of its discovery across the planet and into space as well. Before the Dinyari knew what was happening, Urquan everywhere were hacking at their own bodies with chunks of glass, burning themselves horribly, doing anything that would give them the few seconds of freedom necessary to find the nearest Dinyari and crush the bleeding creature. As they gained longer and longer periods of control, the Urquan developed new tools and weapons to destroy their evil masters. The most gruesome of these devices was the Excruciator, a mechanism which was inserted directly into the brain and generated a constant stream of agony. The Dinyari could not bring themselves to make the necessary mental connection with these tortured Urquan. They were slaughtered by the thousands. The Urquan slave revolt was one. So the Urquan literally just kind of attacked themselves. They basically just hurt themselves. Wow, that's uh, gotta hurt. Fifty years ago, the Druze were informed by the now extinct Perdixes race of a powerful alien nation called the Utwig. The Utwig, the Perdixes explained, were pleasant, sophisticated creatures, but they were also terminally depressed and often spoke about ending their lives by activating a super weapon, some kind of gigantic bomb, which they had found on one of their worlds. Zeta Hyades 6B, I think it was. The Druze recognized the description of the bomb as a precursor planetarium tool, which indeed was an explosive device of unrivaled power, and they set out to make it their own. Though the revolting, criminal, insidious Druze rarely leave their sphere of influence, it encompasses Algol, Almagas, and the Persei stars. They made a special trip on this occasion to the Aquarii constellation, where they made contact with the Utwig. There is a device commonly known as the Ultron, is it now in your possession? Ah, I see. The Druze sold this device to the Utwig, explaining that it was a precursor personal magnifier, which would enrich the lives of their entire culture in too many ways to describe specifically. The Utwig, I am sorry to say, fell for the Druze's foul ruse and snapped up the Ultron immediately. Fortunately for us all, the Ludwig did not pay the Druze's requested price, the Super Bomb, and instead gave him a collection of historical oddments and genuine artifacts, which to this day the Druze are trying to unload on unwary buyers. So, Zeta Hyades 6B, we're definitely gonna have to go there. The Thradash are an arrogant, stubborn, and thick-skinned species who reside in the Draconis and Apodis star systems. They have little or no respect for anything but force, which they admire greatly. To make the Pradash your friends, you should consider killing most, but not all of them. In addition, they guard some kind of sacred relic at the star system Zeta Draconis. Though we do not know the true nature of this artifact, the Pradash homeworld is at Delta Draconis. Okay, so to be their friends you have to kill some of them, or maybe try the next time we meet them. So. Finally, a bit more historical information to finish off. Urquan was free of psychic compulsion when the last 
free Dinyare was dead. The combined might of the Urquan star fleets met in orbit above the Dinyare home world. They had come together to make two important decisions. First, how to punish the few frightened Dinyare left below on the planet's surface. Second, how to ensure that never again would the Earth One be made slaves. The first decision was made swiftly. The Dinyari would not be allowed to die. Ah, that was too kind of fate. Instead, the creatures would be genetically modified into some sentience they would become dumb animals. These low creatures would be further debased by serving the Earth One for all eternity in the most demeaning way the Earth One could imagine. Acting as translators, making physical contact with other species, whom the Earth One now considered grossly inferior to themselves and revolting. The second decision, how to ensure their freedom permanently, caused great turmoil. And I guess that's where the Kazerzar and the Kora had different doctrines about how to um, deal with other species. So that's pretty much where the war kind of started, I guess. A pleasure dealing with you, Captain. We look forward to your next visit. And we can't wait to talk to you again, Mr. Melnor, maybe because you still have a ton of information to give us about everything that we have to do. Um, so you've given us a new clue about Zeta Hyade 6B, which um, I don't know where it is. But I think it would also be impossible to go through a dash and kill a ton of them. Apparently that's a really good thing to do. And then you can become friends with them. I don't know, we'll try that. Um, I don't know why... Melnorm, why why they t keep talking about the thread ash so much and why it's so important? I guess we'll find out eventually. Um, so yeah, but that precursor bomb definitely sounds like something cool. But of course, I'm going to go back to Earth quickly and fuel up and stuff like that and get some crew and everything. Definitely crew, and then we'll be back for the hunt for Rainbow Worlds.